I'm from uh, East Tennessee, so like Knoxville area, uh, and I just came down just for this race, Freedom Spec Weekend. This is Evan Turner, the champion of the Drone Racing League, which appears on television, but what's more notable than that is that he is also a drone business owner. This 18 year old business mogul and has become one of the fastest growing drone businesses in the entire industry. How did this happen? I was able to catch up with him as he traveled to Houston to our famous nice racing spot. So you graduated 10 days yep. and you don't have to interview, you already got a job <laughs> lined up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I am uh, currently foregoing college or at least going on a gap year and uh, I have been in a very fortunate position to where FPV has given me some really unique opportunities between DRL, uh, filming opportunities, as well as uh, 533 being, I guess, the biggest one. Uh, it's something that I think I can learn a lot from, and I'm going to pursue it as much, learn as much about business, maybe not FPV forever, but I feel like there's a lot I've, I have learned and can hopefully continue to learn. So that's what I'm uh, doing for these next few years, but just going out as hard as I can, making the most of every opportunity that I can, and we'll go from there. Uh, the parents supportive? Yeah, yeah. No, so it was... Uh, so, like, your dad's a doctor. Is that a lot of Both pressure? my parents are doctors. Both so, your parents are doctors. So they're highly educated, and there's, like, there's some pressure there, for sure. Like, this is something that I love to do, and I mean, I might not go to college and get X degree and whatnot, but, like, if I can go out and do this every single day and love every second of it, then that's what they want me to do. And if I can pursue that and do it where I don't get tired of it, because if you go and do a job, you make X amount of money, but you don't like it, then, then what's the point in that? I want to go out every single day, and, I mean, I get up... I. I'm voluntarily here at a drone race doing what I love, like pursuing my passion right. and you brought, you brought a, a store, yeah, merchandise to sell. Trying to grow a brand, like that's just something you have to learn and do over time. It's not, I can't go to a class and I mean, I can look at a, different, a thousand different models of how to do it, but I, I'm doing it in the flesh, I guess, and trying to learn where I can and then I can apply that to other things as I get older. But I just think this is the, what's best for me right now. I've been fascinated by business for many, many years. It's something I've studied as a hobby of mine. I actually went to grad school just to learn a little bit more about it. What I find very interesting is that there are some people out there that intuitively know these things without having taken the advanced learning to learn this stuff. They just know it. And this seems to be one of these individuals here. And it's very interesting to see him at such a young age. Now, as mentioned, uh, Evan is not doing this alone. He's not making all of the decisions and the designs. He enlisted the help of an established engineer and that sets his company apart from a lot of the others. Um, we have a lot of designers in this industry that are essentially hobbyists but by him actually hiring an engineer in order to get this done that sets him apart that makes his designs a little bit better and then they are actually proven on the race course the last several championships being won using his products now what is interesting is that his products become something that has a coolness factor a factor about him that other people want because they perform because they win i mentioned just like air jordan shoes that a lot of people wanted because the bulls and michael jordan were winning and dominating for so many years and now the equivalent to that is 533 uh products and then you can use what the champions use and that's one thing that's very interesting that sets us apart from car racing is that the products are relatively inexpensive in comparison so every new beginner racer that wants to try to race for the first time can build the exact replica that these guys are using to win those championship races and just oh, yeah. local pickup for shipping and i just yeah. give them to you that's my that was my biggest thing is like if when I say I'm 30 and I want to do this exact same thing now, if I quit my job and go start a business, now it's my wife, my kids, my house, my car, like that's all putting on the line. Now, if I go broke tomorrow, I'm like every broke 18 year old in the world and I can restart and do, just, I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. And I'm just like every other 18 year old. But if I go out and just do it, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I'm just, I'm in a unique op new opportunity, unique position. And I just feel there's no reason for me not to go out and give everything I got and see where it takes me. I really respect a lot of like what other FPV companies have done. And I tried to think of, I mean, all the best, like Team Pyro Drone, for example, back in their like heyday, quote unquote, they had all the best pilots out there and they were very, very like generous, I'd say, to like other people. 
and if you have the, the name or the, the faces to all the product that are like the good name. And I am friends with all these top pilots. We're all a group, group, tight group of guys, so I can support my friends and by all my friends being some of the top pilots in the nation, then they can all go out to their friends and their friends and their friends. So I just went out, supported all my friends, helped, tried, to, I mean, that's just supporting your friends. You want to do that. And by doing that, that helped, they helped me out by supporting the business. And that really gave us the kickstart that we needed. We obviously are, won the multi-GP champs that year. We had so many in the top 16. And I think this year we had 50% running the frames, like 40% running the motors. And like it all, it was all, I say all of this was done almost on accident. Like I wasn't trying to run the perfect business model or anything, but it just kind of happened. I was trying to support my buddies and now it's grown to something much larger than that gave the possibility that those top racers would then travel with his equipment back to their respective set cities and states and then their community would get exposed to these products they are probably the fastest people in their community and so by them doing that they could then go back and people would want to fly what their fast guy that they know flies. It's very interesting that concept of all of a sudden him getting all the kids that he knew, his friends, uh, to use his equipment by giving it to them. And in his words, he just wanted to help his friends out. You know, there is a parallel to this in the music industry that I have learned about for many years. If you look to the Wu-Tang Clan. If what you say is true, the Shaolin and the Wu-Tang could be dangerous. Wu-Tang is for the children. We teach the children. You know what I mean? Puffy is good, but Wu-Tang is the best. And that's right, the Wu-Tang Clan, they decided to have, instead of all of their performers or members of the Wu-Tang Clan, all a part of the same label, they encouraged them to work with other labels to go back to their respective communities. And then the Wu-Tang influence would grow. And that seems to be a little bit like how 533 is. They have this sort of crew of team pilots that are the fastest in their towns and states, and they all get to compete each other. And it's very interesting. And then, well, where did you get the idea for the Spread Spec too? That is no zero credit to me. That is all Sean Ames uh, from Harvard America. He is one of uh, been one of the, my biggest supporters for years, like long before 53 and everything. I remember meeting him at the Mega Drone X in like 2017 in the ca Caverns race. We raced in a big cavern, and he's been supporting me ever since. And he's always wanted a spec league of some sort. He's tried multiple things, and he's great friends with Armando and I both. And he kind of pitched us the idea. We told him we support it, help fund it, and it's kind of grown to, again something bigger than I could have ever imagined. And I can't thank Sean enough for this, but we're trying to support as much as possible. And at the end of the day, like I'm not trying to be a millionaire, I'm trying to grow drone racing and make it something for other people to support off of. Because what people I don't think realize is, you know, there's people I hate DJI, I hate analog, whatever. At the end of the day, if the hot, if the industry is growing, everyone will gain from that. So I'm all, I'm just trying to grow the industry, make it easy for people to get into. And if I can be a good influence to that and help inspire other people to start their own businesses, help make the FPV community better in any shape or form, and that's what I'm going to do. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a mixture of just having a good product, first of all, and that's all the product. I give 100% credit to Armando. He's like a, he's a, a very talented engineer, has some of the best ideas. And I think you combine that with uh, like supporting the community. I think what people, I think we're all just such a tight-knit community in general, that if you're going out there supporting races, Helping people out, if somebody has a broken quad, you're like, here man, take this, take this. And uh, trying to just help the community in general, then people want to help you out in return. And I think that was the biggest thing we tried to do is always, if you go out there trying to make a million dollars and you go out you're trying to make money, then you're going to be like, oh man, no, I need to save some dollars here. I need, I can't give out too much stuff. But if you're going out there trying to help your friends, it will all come back to you in the end. And I think that's really, that's how the business started. I wasn't trying to start some crazy business. I was trying to help out my friends and sell a couple of frames out of my basement. And just out of the like, I guess, lightheartedness of the business, the way it started, it really kind of, people saw how organic and genuine it was. And I think that's kind of what we've tried to maintain and continue to maintain is just, I want to make FPV as good as it possibly can be for years to come. and. Uh, as far as if people support us, then we can continue doing that for FPV in the future. So that's just. Yeah. Okay, so or was it just like. All right, we're up, boys. We're up. we're up. I wanted to run the best products I possibly could. If you want to run what I run, then I'm happy to sell it to you. And I want to support my friends doing the same thing. So I'm trying to help them do the best they can. And it really ended up just being the perfect storm, like I said.
uh, and I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate and lucky to have gotten there. Freedom spec hit one. <laughs> so, right, uh, thanks, it's all worked thanks, out. Thank you. Waterburger? Waterburger? Yes, is that what? what Waterburger? Is that what you just call it? Well, Waterburger. We don't, oh, have, we don't say it the right way. I don't, we don't have, the right I haven't way. had these in Tennessee. This is my first time. That's what I was wanting to know. Okay, did you eat it? Yeah, yeah. What did you think? It was, the fries were good. The fries were good. I was working. Oh, the fries were good. No, 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 no. I was just saying. Where do you get a chicken sandwich? I haven't had one. I don't know. Waterburger's a Texas thing. No, no, no. I, I think fries are a very important part of any burger place, personally. Oh, man. So, and I mean, like, because you got to have good fries to compliment your burger, you know? Yeah. So, I was, uh, you know, so I, the burger was good, but yeah. I, I the fries really what puts it over the edge for me. And they had good fries. Yeah, they got the uh, the, the, the heart attack, high blood pressure mm, fries. Mm -hmm. But they're barbecue. good. They're good. That's a good one. Have no, you had In-N-Out out before? I had In-N-Out, and that's what we were thinking in about In-N-Out, but we're yeah. doing In-N-Out tomorrow. In-N-Out, oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta know after you try I had, well, I've had, I had In-N-Out, I was in Dallas like a couple weeks ago, and that, that was good. And I, I, you know, I think my burger was better at In-N-Out, but my fries were better at Whataburger. Mm -hmm. So it's 50, it depends what you right, value. Right, right, right. I have to tell them to calm down on the uh, salt a little bit. <laughs> on the, at Whataburger? <laughs> I'm of age. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. If you want to support a young innovator, a young business mogul, and see him grow, we'll see how long it takes before he's the most dominant force in this entire industry. So if you would like to support his cause, his company, I'll have links below for his company, 533. What do you think in the comments, guys? Uh, do you want to see more of these interviews and highlights like this? Thanks, guys. What's the color of freedom? What, what are you? Red, America. Red, it's teal for uh, Freedom Spec Motors. Right. Uh, teal. I don't know what is teal. What? Five, four, three, two, one. Initial lap, initial lap and land. Neo 50.1, Leo done. Good job, Leo. Lobster 40.